uh, good evening everyone so i am going to speak as i just mentioned on smdg in clinical practice and i am happy that session is included in the technology session because a lot of things are changing even in the self monitoring of blood glucose in uh, clinical practice i don't have any disclosures for this session uh what why you know it is important to have a good glycemic control that's the first thing we know that glycemic level is the the increased glucose level is the hallmark of diabetes and controlling glucose levels is directly associated with vascular complications or vascular risk of diabetes there is a strong evidence to prove that good glycemic control is associated with reduction in both macro and macrovascular complications and that is why good achieving good glycemic control is possibly of the utmost importance uh, if we are looking at optimum management of diabetes now when we are looking at good glycemic control we can't control well unless we are monitoring how the glucose levels are doing and we know glucose levels keep changing minute to minute within few minutes within you know days and over days so we have to keep monitoring glucose level and what are the modalities that are available for men monitoring these glucose levels the most commonly used modality is the self monitoring of blood glucose which provides day to day plasma glucose levels the other is the glycated hemoglobin or a1c which provides average blood glucose levels over preceding 2 to 3 months and the fructose amine test which is uncommonly used because of the standardization issues are there it can provide preceding uh, you know 2 to 3 weeks average glucose levels and now we have continuous glucose monitoring which is also available as a tool for the patients to monitor their own uh, glucose levels on a more or less continuous basis and this measures blood uh, interstitial fluid glucose levels uh, for a varying duration of time it can be every 3 minutes every 5 minutes or 15 minutes depending on what tool we are using so two primary techniques that we commonly use uh, in the clinical practice are the patient monitored blood glucose or the self monitoring of the blood glucose by patients and the a1c now guidelines have started recommending cjm as important uh, tool and uh, the recommendation is that cjm has you know important role to play in assessing the efficacy and safety of treatment in subgroups of patients especially with type 1 diabetes and selected patients with type 2 diabetes who are treated with insulin my focus in the, this presentation is going to be self monitoring of blood glucose so what is self monitoring of blood glucose the self monitoring is testing and recording blood glucose levels by patient and or the patient carer at different times of the day so smbg we all know is critical for management of you know patients with diabetes because if we don't know the glucose level we don't know there is no way we can change treatment you know optimize treatment or change the dietary factors or the exercise and so on provides information about glu glucose uh, levels in the real time helps controlling day to day glycemic variability it gives immediate feedback uh, to provide you know to take further actions depending on whether you want to change medication or exercise or there is a change required in diet and therefore smbg basically helps clinicians to take informed therapeutic decisions and help patients achieving a better glycemic control so smbg is a very important tool in the control of glycemia now the problem is that despite knowing all this we have very low level of usage of glucose smbg in india and this is data from icmr in dab study and if you see that overall about 15% people with diabetes are using uh, you know smbg in urban areas and only about 9% of the people with diabetes are using smbg in rural areas which is a very dismal figure now whenever we talk of you know smbg or the blood glucose testing at home by patient or carer the usual thing that they do is they keep jotting the values in a diary and good number of times some diary is something like this so this doesn't make any sense because this this just gives a you know random figures noted at random times and if we we are not able to make out a pattern like in this image we are seeing you know 
number of values before lunch after lunch and so on but we can't make out any pattern so if we don't we are not able to make out any pattern or it is a unstructured or un you know planned glucose testing it has no value now why you know clinicians don't utilize smbg data in clinical practice in indian setting possibly the multiple reasons are there one of them is insufficient clinical information with the patient how to do the smbg properly and they are not having proper education and training in uh, monitoring their own glucose at home there is difficult to analyze uh, data or effectively track results and react to those results by modifying the treatment at times you know people are testing only in the morning and they think their glucose in the morning is fine but their postprandial during the day may be haywire so it gives a overestimation of the quality of care provided and um, you know there are fear of adverse events there is poor uh, confidence the in the patient or carer's own ability to manage insulin dosage or insulin level so there are multiple reasons why you know clinicians are not using smbg in clinical practice so on the patient size there is lack of you know smbg performance because of the poor education and training in performing the smbg and this le leads to you know um, uh, unstructured testing at the level of patient which doesn't provide adequate information for the clinician to apply it to man uh, treatment decision making and this lack leads to lack of clinicians using smbg so there is a vicious circle and this leads to actually unrealized value of smbg the uh, the value that smbg can actually provide in management of diabetes and this is where the structured smbg or structured self uh, glucose monitoring comes into place so what is structured smbg structured smbg is nothing but monitoring blood glucose levels at the right frequency at the right times and in the right situation structured smbg is a methodical approach to blood glucose monitoring and involves checking blood glucose levels at predefined times and on every day and this enables both patient and clinicians to understand the blood glucose patterns throughout the day and once you get the patterns you can analyze the patterns and if the patient is also recording the food intake or the physical activity actually you can understand a lot about how the glucose uh, levels are changing and why they are changing and they then you can have informed you know decision making and make appropriate therapeutic adjustments based on the structured smbg values so smbg is effective only when it is done in a structured manner and patient need to be educated on the purpose and procedure of smbg and education should also include explaining the patients on the importance of good glycemic control if they don't know why they are having a good glucose control why they are chasing glucose values they you know doesn't make sense to them to uh, look at the values also and clinicians should also be having adequate knowledge to interpret the glucose well values correctly to correlate the impact of uh, you know medication meal exercise taken before or after the you know values and understand the pattern and take appropriate actions uh, in improving the therapeutic impacts now uh, as for the keeping a diary is concerned patients need to be told how to keep a good you know blood glucose diary and now most of the new meters actually have a you know inbuilt uh, system which connects with the phone or the laptop and all the values get transferred into the uh, diary in a very very appropriate manner and you can see when the test was done and how it was done and one should emphasize on entering all the results and also make comments about the daily activity or the eating or missed doses and all that and this can be you know interpreted by the physician uh, in detail now uh, advantages of smbg include that this helps in helps both clinicians and patients to achieve desired levels of glucose control while preventing hypoglycemia or significant hyperglycemia thus plays a crucial role making uh, the journey of achieving good glycemic control whether it's on oral agents or insulin uh, safely and effectively for all the patients it also if you educate the patient properly it empowers the patients in managing their own treatment they can make adjustment in their lifestyle their eating behavior and also their insulin doses 
Now, if we compare with A1C, two hour glucose levels, you know, have been shown to be more uh, stronger predictor of cardiovascular disease, uh, which can be easily obtained by SMDP. And if we are looking only at the A1C values, which just give a, you know, overall average of last three months, actually these values may not be very accurate also in Indian setting. One, because of the lack of standardized equipment available in majority of the labs. And then there are other factors like hemoglobinopathies, the wide prevalence of anemia, blood loss. And even in pregnancy, there is a rapid turnover of RBCs and the Maybe you need to do more frequent SMBG rather than relying only on A1C. And if you are doing A1C, maybe you have to do it every month because you want to, you know, see the impact of changes in uh, treatment on faster basis and you want to achieve the control faster. So for a patient, structure testing means improved disease awareness, improved ability improved ability to recognize and estimate the impact of certain behaviors or impacts on events in the on the blood glucose levels and their active participation on therapy adjustments for physicians or healthcare provider the structured testing means a more reliable data as a base for pattern analysis and therapy adjustments and possibly help in improving better compliance and more active involvement of the patient in structured testing so structured testing basically gives you a pattern which is amenable to analysis helps in treatment decision making and taking action on various uh, aspects of treatment whether you want to change diet exercise whether you want to add or reduce a dose of oral agent or insulin agent or insul intensify insulin therapy and so on now uh, prior to step study majority of the studies were perform performed on type 2 diabetes and again showed that if you do a structured SMBG, then possibly you are able to achieve a better A1C reduction varying in different studies between anything between 0.3 to 1.2%. And similar data has been shown in studies where patients were treated with oral um, insulin also. These were all studies on non-insulin treated patients and there were some studies on patients who were treated with insulin. Now, STEP study was uh, basically a two-arm prospective cluster randomized multi-center clinical trial, which was done in, uh, you know, multiple centers located in Eastern United States involved about 480 patients, and they were divided into active control group and the structure testing group. The active control group was provided as usual care enhanced with the three-monthly visit to the physician and utilizing point of care A1C and whatever avail available SMBG data was there. Structured testing group, on the other hand, was given the same care, but they were also, you know, doing a structured SMBG and they were using a AccuCheck 360 degree view, uh, you know, app or glucose analysis system where all the uh, values were being fed. And the results showed that use of structure testing along with use of the this, uh, you know, tool to um, record and interpret the values was helpful in reducing A1C significantly, providing overall better glycemic control, was also helpful in enabling the therapy optimization and taking efficient steps, uh, also making the use of, uh, you know, uh, glucose strips more efficient. Patients understood when to test and when not to test and what testing at what times is going to be better. And also, if you know, provided a, enhanced the, feeling of general well-being or a positive psychological impact. Uh, we, you know, published uh, the first uh, self-monitoring guidelines in India under the ages of RSSDI in 2018. And again, uh, structured blood glucose testing was uh, recommended as the way to monitor glucose. Uh, the guidelines state uh, or the clinical practice recommendations state that blood glucose self uh, measurement is at predefined times so of structured SMEG should be the way to do it. it. It is a way of generating reliable and medically relevant blood glucose information with a purpose to support therapeutic decisions. And, you know, if we have multiple point SMBG, this may be used uh, in as a substitute to CGM data in resource constraint settings. 
recognizing the individual glycemic abnormalities based on smbg data collected in a structured manner should be helpful in you know providing pattern analysis or patterns amenable to analysis uh, and structured smbg and pattern analysis are tightly connected parts of therapy uh, helping in decision making process now another important measure that we are looking at now is the glycemic variability and plays important role in development of uh, long term complications independent of the a1c levels and we have now data to show that high day to day glycemic variability is associated with increased risk of severe hypoglycemia all cause mortality cardiovascular disease ischemic stroke uh, increased progression or enhanced progression of endothelial or renal dysfunction and increased risk of cognitive impairment so this highlights uh, the need for a practical or simple tool which may be as simple as smbg to assess the glycemic variability on routine basis now when we are doing you know smbg it gives us point values or real time values but it doesn't give any you know pattern in any particular day but once we are doing see continuous glucose monitoring it gives a overall view of the variability in within a day and once we are doing on every day it gives a pattern over few days so there is a it is something like we are doing a ecg which gives a cross sectional view of the heart rhythm done over a minute or versus the holter which gives a you know 24 hours recording of the ecg now this uh, has uh, you know uh, with the use of cgm we have started using new metrics uh, and new parameters like time and range time above range and so on which i am not going to discuss because dr bansi is going to speak on uh, the same uh, things in the next session now uh, what we are uh, now looking at is the enhanced weather enhancing the analysis of smbg data and cloud based integrated system can improve uh, you know understanding of smbg and can this be used these points measured on daily basis can they be used as you know surrogate marker of glycemic variability for assessing glycemic variability and this is a study from italy done by antonio catrozola uh, this study evaluated in the real life setting the association between a1c and percent of points spent in target range points are the glucose values that are within the target range and these values are picked up from smbg values in insulin treated type 1 and type 2 patients and this uh, study evaluated the relationship between a1c and the points in range mean glucose and glycemic variability 197 patients with type 1 and 336 patients with type 2 diabetes were included in this study and points were considered to be or the glucose values were considered to be in range when they were between 70 to 180 and this study showed that there is a strong correlation point in points measured in range with the 2 weeks and 2 months a1c uh, values this is a small retrospective of observational study that we did at our center and what we did was we picked up the uh, cgm uh, you know profiles of uh, the patients who had been uh, uh, tested for cgm using libre pro and they had simultaneously conducted their they were doing uh, the structured smbg on the same days when they were you know undergoing cgm and they were recording that and we included the patients who were having at least three values on a particular day uh, for uh, the study and overall we were able to have 93 days of data having at least four values one fasting and uh, three postprandial values and we compared the values measured by structured smbg with cgm uh, profiles on daily basis looking at the time above range time below range and uh, you know points of in range and points above range and below range and we did for the regular uh, you know target range and also the tight control range and there was a strong correlation found between the uh, you know time in range and time above range measured by cgm compared with the structured smbg time below range the the correlation was not significant because we didn't have um, uh, many data points for that and this paper we actually this abstract we presented at the attd meeting uh, this year only so to conclude my presentation structured smbg is a methodical approach to blood glucose monitoring it involves checking blood glucose at uh, 
predefined levels each day. This enables the patients and clinicians to understand <coughs> the blood glucose pattern throughout the day. Patients also can also record their food intake and physical activity, and this is further helpful in understanding the glucose variations on a daily basis. Physician role is to regularly review the SMBG data at every follow-up and also discuss the SMBG readings with the patient and explain to them what is happening to the glucose values. And this helps in making appropriate therapeutic adjustments based on the structured SMBG values and helps in achieving better glycemic control for most of our patients. With that, I conclude my presentation. Hopefully, I have finished in time. Thank you.